There are tons of general reviews out there for the new MacBook Pros. You can't swing a dead cat without some talking head reading specs about whatever it is, but there aren't a ton of videos out there talking about specific use cases. If you do need just the basic stuff, you can choose just about any Mac that's out there and never really have an issue. But if you're a musician, if you're a video editor, if you're both of those things, uh, then it's not quite as easy. I've been a musician and an audio engineer for more than 30 years. I mean, I started recording when there was no recording on computer. It all happened on uh, tape. <laughs> My first Macs, like they couldn't even barely run word processors, let alone audio or anything like that. I've been recording on computers now since around 2003. I mean, I guess it was a computer. That's when the possibility of making a record on a computer in your house and not in someone else's studio was newly a thing. My first digital recording interface was a box made by Zoom that did everything inside that box. I actually kind of loved that thing, but eventually I upgraded to a MacBook. Then around 2008, I got an iMac and I started recording other bands as well as my own stuff, did that for a few years. Video came along for me in 2013 when I started making this YouTube stuff. Back then I was just using iMovie with maybe the internal webcam or a, a really terrible webcam otherwise. I, HD was a dream, 4K was another dimension. None of those things were even possible for me at that point. And honestly, how did we ever get any work done back then? It took time, I mean, a lot of time. You could cook and eat a meal in the time it took to render out a video. I don't think a lot of younger users and reviewers kind of understand this. If you could take me back to 2013 or 2003 and tell me that there would be this miracle machine that could do all this stuff, I would have thought you were crazy, but you know, here it is. Feel new power surging within me. I went out and bought the middle spec version of the MacBook Pro 16 with the M1 Pro chip and 16 gigabytes of unified memory. At 2,400 bucks, it's not cheap, but the MacBook Pro I had from 2019 up until earlier this year cost me $2,800. And it basically held the same spot in the lineup that this one does. While the price isn't cheap, it isn't as bad as it used to be. The Apple tax has actually gone down in the past year or so with these M1 Macs, which I don't know that I ever really thought would happen. When the first M1 machines came out, I tried them just to see what they were all about and they were very impressive. If you've watched my videos about that and I'll link those later on. If you've watched those videos, you'll know that uh, for my workflow, there was still a lot of hardware and software that wasn't quite ready to go with the M1. So for the past six months, maybe eight months, I've been using a 2020 iMac with a 3.8 gigahertz i7 chip, a Radeon Pro 5500 XT GPU and 40 gigabytes of RAM. I kept it on Mac OS Catalina to make sure it could run everything I needed it to run, and I waited to see what Apple came up with next. With the previous MacBooks, I had adjusted to life without ports. I've got my CalDigit TS3 dock. The four USB-A ports and two Thunderbolt 3 ports on the iMac were a nice luxury. It worked pretty much flawlessly in the time that I had it, and it helped me get my workflow settled down so I could be more efficient. In a world without the new MacBook Pros, I could have happily used the iMac for years to come. But when Apple announced these new MacBook Pros, not only with the power that they claimed, but then uh, they brought, they actually brought back some ports and they improved the headphone jack. I mean, I, yeah, I got a little giddy, okay? I just went and I said, bring me the thing and poof. And I haven't been disappointed. The MacBook has done everything I've asked without breaking a sweat. There's no fan noise, there's no heat. It just pretty much instantaneously does whatever, I, I mean, it could only be faster if it was connected to my brain. Now, now, don't get me wrong, I'm still impressed. For someone who makes videos and records audio, the reintroduction of the SD card reader, the HDMI port, I don't have to worry about dongles as much while the inclusion of Thunderbolt 4 ports here still, uh, I can hook up the MacBook to my desktop setup with just that one cable and have everything available to me. I mean, including my audio interface, a full selection of microphones, keyboards, electronic drums, as well as my permanent camera setup that I, I use for filming right here. Uh, being a creative person, uh, especially an independent creative person, has honestly never been easier. And 
it just keeps getting easier as Apple releases more and more stuff. Apple did not have to mess with the headphone jack, but they did it. And now I can use my less sensitive, more professional headphones like my Sennheiser HD 600s or DT 770s without having to go and use an external DAC or anything like that. When it comes to video now, my video projects, as if you're familiar with the channel, really aren't like super involved. I try to keep them simple so that I can get more stuff done and get more content out more quickly. But rendering videos always takes a decent amount of time. And on the iMac, it was not terrible, but it, w it wasn't like that. So how much faster is the MacBook Pro? I took a recent project of mine and rendered it out on the iMac, and then I unplugged the iMac and plugged the MacBook in with just that one cable, like I was talking about. Nothing changed except for the computer that was doing the rendering. And the MacBook Pro kind of destroyed the iMac. Now, that's relative in the sense that the iMac took three minutes to render it out. Then the MacBook Pro took a minute and a half. That's for a 12 minute video, pretty impressive. Now I still film in 1080p and that project is in 1080p, but with the MacBook, I can honestly now upgrade to 4K and not lose any time, which is a big deal for me since I do all this myself. <laughs> nitty gritty time. Is the MacBook Pro a worthy upgrade? If you have a computer that's more than a few years old, yes, Y-E-S full stop. No more discussion. I mean, it, you can get your work done with whatever you've got, surely. But if you get one of these, it'll make you feel like you've entered some sort of like time space warp where things happen and you get so much more done. It's just, it, it's that different. For someone like me with a machine that's barely a year old, the question is a little bit more complicated. The iMac could still serve me well for quite a while without the computer being the bottleneck for what keeps me from getting things done. There are pluses to the iMac. I mean, there's the size, the ports, etc., etc. The screen is beautiful. That's stuff that you won't have on a laptop, although the screen on this laptop is probably the best laptop screen I've ever seen. If you haven't seen it yet, go to your local, wherever you could look at it and look at it. In years past, you would unplug your laptop and get less performance uh, if you wanted to go mobile. That's not the case here. The MacBook outpaces the iMac in pretty much every way, plugged in or not plugged in. Add the portability, the addition of these ports that, well, the re-addition of these ports, plus the more important than I thought it would be a uh, headphone jack. And for me, while it's a luxury to have this machine, um, I think I can justify it. Even though I'll be losing money by selling the iMac so soon, it'd be hard to, it'd be hard to give give this up to go to go back the promise of the m1 max has been tons of power in the hands of just about anyone and now with the 16 and 14 inch macbook pros you have more power than professional studios and video houses had even 10 years ago in this blazing fast little little aluminum thing uh, they say the difference between science and magic you keep using the horde I don't think it means what you think it means. Is the ability to understand how it's done. I honestly don't know how Apple is doing this. If you want to hear music from me, I have a channel where you can do that. It's linked down below. I'm your Huckleberry. If you want to see more uh, audio related videos or more Apple related videos, there are some links that are going to pop up here. If you want to check me out on the social medias or hear even more of my creative output, my novel, my records, etc., etc., link tree down in the description. If you want to check out another painfully honest video about audio stuff or Apple stuff or smartphone stuff, you can click whatever pops up here and that'll take you there. Otherwise, thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Once again, my name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.